That needs a YouTube intro. You want to help? I'm helping. Who's your favorite character in Genshin? None of those. Chi yeah. Chi? Uh huh. Your favorite is Chi Chi. That's why I wanted her on. I'm never building Chi Chi. I'm holding my arm. My favorite Chi Chi. <laughs> well, I pulled Chi Chi. Pull Chi Chi in. Yo, what's going on, guys? Second Buckle here, bringing you another Genshin Impact video. For this one, we're going over the Animal Traveler, not Chi Chi. Screw Chi Chi. I hate Chi Chi. No. I like Chi Chi. No, she's stupid. No, I can't see it. In this video, we're not going to make a Chi Chi video. Yes, we are. Never. We're going to make an Animal Traveler video. Now. All right. You want to say? You want to say? We'll jump right into it. I Okay, first off, I'm a YouTuber. I'm doing this for the memes. I don't recommend this. Also, I got three accounts, so I can do stupid shit. We've done the unthinkable. We've done something so sinister, so insane, that no other person in the entirety of Genshin Impact will ever do. Well, they might do it, but they probably won't do it for a long time. Crowned Animal Traveler. But I figured no one would do it. I'm one of the few people that have multiple accounts. So I can just do stupid shit on one of my accounts. So with Animal Traveler, what I have noticed, she's really fun, but she has one major bug that I really hate. And it's the only thing that's bad about the kit and I hope it gets fixed eventually. Now you may have realized this consciously or subconsciously, but one of the things that makes Animal Traveler the worst possible option for every player in the game is the energy recharge on Animal Traveler. So if you hit any character in the game with an E, you'll actually see the energy particles float towards you like this. But one of the things that's really annoying about Animal Traveler is if you use the E and you dodge afterward, the energy particles won't show up. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate. Dodge, no energy particles. There's a bug with Animal Traveler that makes it so it's really hard to get your ultimate up. You can also cancel the E and it still goes on cooldown, which are two major things I hate about this character. And that makes Animal Traveler kind of a lackluster option because this bug, even when you're doing damage, makes it so you don't get any kind of uh, gain back. So, for example, if I did the same trick on Bennett, Bennett is gonna get his, his stuff back. Let's, no matter how you dodge, you're in the spam dodge, you don't have that issue. So there's no other character in the game that I've seen have that issue. So I really hope they do fix Animal Traveler and they boost her in a really good positive way. But essentially, at level 13 talent, which is what you get because you have C6 guaranteed, you get your E damage, which is on a five second cooldown at 374%, which is not that much, by the way. But if you use a storm and you do a hold E, it goes up to 408%, but also hits a bunch of times beforehand. And then also swirls an element. So the thing I was most curious about is which weapon brings this out the best, because you have like a bunch of different things that you can use. And I actually tested between a bunch of different weapons throughout the entirety of Genshin Impact. And the first weapon I tested, I'm gonna show you with an iron thing. I know it's only level 70, but you can kind of see how this is gonna play out. And I think it's better to just show than tell. And we're gonna do a Guobo Nado. So you can basically just dump in there. Now, if I do end up using Elemental Mastery, my Swirl damage gets boosted and I hit it from about 14,600. And the damage is actually pretty high. There's the Iron Sting, the free to play option. I thought it was kind of lackluster. The Elemental Mastery bonus that I got, I thought was gonna be way better for providing Swirl damage. I, even at level 90, I thought the Elemental damage that I got from the Iron Sting would be really high, but I'm only getting 12% and I have to refine this uh, four more times. So I don't really think it's gonna be a good option. And just so you know, I did try, I did test it at level 70 between all three weapons and then tested it at level 80 uh, on other accounts. And it just, it doesn't hold up. It might hold up at higher refines, but I, I, from my experience, I just didn't like it. The next weapon I tested was the most obvious choice at, to me, which was the Festering Desire. And this weapon increases elemental skill damage by 32%. So boosting the E was gonna be like spicy meat the bowl. And I was like, yeah, this is gonna be nice. This is gonna be real nice. And I was, I was testing it out and... So let's go ahead and hold it up. The E here, bam, damage. Now the energy recharge is the main reason I love this weapon because I was able to spam ultis a lot more often. And then when I got into an like a mode where I was going to hit somebody, I was ready to just go all in. But there is a huge problem in the kit, and you just kind of saw it there. Um, if your E gets interrupted for any reason whatsoever, you then get into a situation where you can't do shit. Okay, let's go ahead and Animal Traveler E. So he's hit for about 21,000 with the Bennett buff right there. All right, we're going to do this. And 
let's go ahead and get another swirling. Bam. 16k on open. Let's go ahead and just throw that out there. I think it's in a water nado? No, it's not even got anything on it. Alright. So each of the hits not really providing a ton of damage there. But I wasn't really impressed with the overall damage that you got. But then I switched to the Blacklift Longsword. Twenty thousand. Twenty-three thousand. Eighteen thousand. So the spike crits, of course, are way bigger with the Blacklift Longsword. And when I get stacks up to max stacks, I'm, I'm boost my attack to two thousand four hundred and twenty-eight attack. You can also tell if you get max stacks by the little orby thingies that are surround the Black Sword, Blacklift Longsword. Each one of these dictates one stack. And you can see I'm at two now, so it, now my attack is down to two thousand two hundred fifty-seven. Down to one, I'm at two thousand one hundred sixty-four. And finally, with no stacks, I'm at 2,071. And the weird thing... <laughs> not even streaming. And the weird thing is that whenever you're using a Blacklift Longsword, your, your scaling can ramp really, really heavily with kills. So to make this all happen, what I did was I ended up going with a Viridus and Viriner set. And I, if I wanted to maximize my damage, what I would actually go with instead of a four-piece Viridus and Viriner set would actually be going to a two-piece Viridus and Viriner and going with a two-piece Gladiator set. And that would give me the maximum possible damage I could get on my Animal Traveler with an E. But because I use Animal Traveler very, very often, and I do use Animal Traveler a lot, um, I end up going with a four-piece Viridus and Viriner set. And the reason I do that is because I like boosting elemental damage. So I put a video out a while ago about how you can boost elemental damage with Viridus and Viriner, but I hadn't actually shown it. I think the, the most underrated set as far as the damage booster for elemental damage is the Viridus and Viriner set. And one of the, the sets that a lot of people end up going with because they want to boost their team's damage is a set like the Noblesse Oblige. And they go with the Noblesse Oblige because they want to give their entire team a 20% attack bonus. Well, if you wanted to give your team an attack bonus and give them more damage, the number one set to run on your team as a support character is going to be the Viridus and Viriner. And that's why a lot of people that don't have Sucrose or don't have the uh, Venti or have the option to run two Anima Traveler or Venti or Sucrose on both teams need another Animo option. With Animo Traveler, I'll show you how the damage increase kind of rolls out. The other thing an Animo Traveler does, by the way, if you didn't know, is on the Constellation 6 for Animo Traveler, that you actually decrease Animo resistance by 20%. And if an elemental absorption occurs, you can actually lower the elemental resistance according to that element. And that actually does work, by the way, with... Um, it does stack, by the way. Unfortunately, I got a... Uh, a pyro elemental absorption, so now pyro is going to be better, but it's fine. Okay, now let's hit this heavy electro resistance enemy. This is the perfect enemy to show this on. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to. Okay, maybe I'm not going to go over to her because she's crazy. Okay, my autos are hitting for about 2300, 600, 600, 2300. You can see how the damage kind of rolls out there. And then let's go ahead and use a Viridus and Viridus set. Yeah, I didn't get the swirl. Again, you see the damage ramps up really, really heavily just by using a Viridus and Viriner set and creating a swirl reaction with Animo Traveler be a huge boost to your damage in your overall set. So no matter what character you're using, whether you're using Kaching, whether you're using Bennett, whether you're using Diluc, whoever it may be, Animo Traveler is such a great option for a lot of players in order to boost damage and, and give you a way better hit. And what's really cool about this character is that if you wanted the maximum possible damage that you could actually provide as a quote unquote sub DPS or support DPS, you can actually use Animo Traveler in a really effective way to boost damage. Fun way of using the Animo Traveler. Bop! Okay. One. Two. Three. I missed it. Oh, look at that. 12k kachings. Animal Traveler is probably the least used character out of all the animal characters in the game because if I actually went through and I compared between all the other characters in the game, there is a major reason why Animo Traveler is quote unquote the worst. So as far as supports go between all the other characters in the game, I find Animo Traveler to be the weakest Animo character. But that's not just because of her kit and the energy recharge part. There are stats to back this up actually. 
So here's a side-by-side -side comparison. I know it sucks to see, but here's the comparison between all the animo characters in the game. So Sucrose starts out as the weakest animo character with a 170 attack and scales off of animo damage. So she already gets a huge leg up versus other animo characters because she has the most percentage damage gain because she scales elemental damage. Next, we have Traveler, who actually only has 212 base attack, which is really similar to a lot of four star characters out in the game. It's a very low value of base attack then scales off percentage attack overall. Next up, we have Venti, who sails off energy recharge, but it gets 263 um, overall animo damage. And finally, we have Gene, who is at 239, which already four characters are really low base attack. Now we come to Zhao, who is at a whopping 349 base attack. Power creep doesn't exist, by the way. This is just this is raw power creep right here. This is you can clearly see between animo characters, just raw power creep. The thing that Jean has to compare to all these other characters is Jean has a massive HP pool. Jean has a whopping 14,000 HP versus Zhao having 12,000, Animo Traveler having 10,000, Venti 10,000. You can clearly see there's like a huge disparity between the three characters. The, the five characters here that we have for overall damage. And Animo Traveler is the weakest in the game for a five star character by overall base stat comparison. It's actually really close to a lot of other four star characters in the game. And if we compare it to Sucrose, that's what you see. But if we compare it to any other four star, if we compare this to the most glorious four star in the game, Animo Traveler has less base attack than fucking Amber. Come on, mihoyo. Come on. Boost Animal Traveler when? Bruh. So don't crown your Animal Traveler. It's super not worth, but it's fun to watch, right? So uh, my name is Sekapoko. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys build an Animal Traveler in general. It is worth the build. Definitely not worth the crown. I uh, hope it helps you guys in the future for a, your current character builds. And you guys have a great rest of your day. Oh, yeah. Like and subscribe. Bye.